in this edition of the Mike On Podcast. As President Bola Tinubu continues to make appointments, some of the recent ones have been hit with controversies. Prominent on the list of these appointments are number one, the appointment of the new EFCC chairman, Ola Ulukoyede. Number two is the appointment of the NDDC MD, Dr. Samuel Obuku. Some experts have accused President Bola Tinubu of breaching a certain section of the EFCC Act in the appointment of the new EFCC boss. The presidential spokesman, Mr. Ajubi Ingelali, has explained that no law was breached. On the appointment of the NDDC MD, a lawyer, Maisen Nijo, has written to the president that the law was breached in the process. The president has been accused of breaching the law in his different appointment. Join the conversation today on the MyCom podcast as Shin Okin Baloyi leads guests to talk on these issues. The 60% of Us series. It's an open mic on this show. Everyone gets a chance. And this podcast is independent on my every weekday show, Politics Today, and Weekend Sunday Politics on China's television. Well, welcome, everyone. I'm Shemo Kimale. Well, let's tell you that President Bola Tinubu is still assembling his team. It seems uh, with what we're saying every day, more people are being named. Agencies and prior starters are getting new heads. The latest is a long one, but here are a few of them. Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC Husseini, Ishak Magaji, Industrial Training Fund, Office of Gungu National Sugar uh, Development Council, Kamal Barricade, Nigeria Export Processing Zone Authority, Olufemi Ogunyemi, Nigeria Export Promotion Council, Nonye Ayeni, Nigeria Investment Promotion Commission, Aisha Rimi. These assignments are getting people talking. One notable one are questions raised over the legality or otherwise of the appointment of the new EFCC boss, specifically regarding the Section 2, Subsection 3 of the EFCC Act 2004, which stipulates that a chairman must uh, be a serving or retired member of any government security or law enforcement agency not below the rank of assistant commissioner of police or equivalent and possess not less than 15 years experience what do you make of these new appointments is the president out of order as far as the law is concerned are these made based on political exigency or necessities or the president is following the rule of law and a lot of people have said there's a lot of nepotism in his appointment and this has gotten a lot of nigerians talking and that is the reason why we brought it to the front banner on this podcast welcome everyone i'm not going to be doing the talking on this podcast as you know i'm just the anchor man i have some very uh sound analyst and uh, contributor on this podcast today two of them one is a lawyer whose views are widely um notable uh liberals oshoma who is based in lagos liberals oshoma is a legal practitioner he joins us on the podcast thank you so much mr oshoma for your time today and uh thank um, you so as well as our friend uh, kaude Ogundamisi, who is a political analyst he's an ardent follower and uh, um a very uh vocal uh commentator on nigeria social and political affairs Thank you so much, Cardi. It's good to see you again. It's yeah, thank you, Shane. From London. Thank you so much. We're looking at these from different angles, political, social, um, and legal angles. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Now, where do we start from? Um, uh, these, uh, we understand that the presidency has up almost 2,000 appointments more to make. But let me, just in about 60 seconds, to get your general overview, both of you. Let me begin with uh, uh, liberals. What is your uh, 
summarize for us your view uh, of Bolatinubu from the 29th of uh, May 2023 and October 14, 2023. What do you make of his appointments so far? Um, Shun, I will not uh, pretend here uh, to say that um, I expected a departure from um, President Bola Tinubu's appointment. If, uh, like I said in a forum yesterday, if we accused Bola, um, Buhari of being nepotistic in his appointment, uh, and then we gloss over the appointment so far of uh, the nepotistic uh, or the, the nepotism exhibited also by President Bola Tinubu in his appointment, then we owe Buhari an apology. Uh, because if you look at it, it's, it's almost certain even people in, in government or, you know, supporters of the president also are finding it difficult, even though they are discussing it hush-hush. They are finding it difficult, you know, to even explain all of this nepotistic appointment. The essence of, you know, having, um, the, what do you call it, um, uh, um, spread in your appointment is to give everybody in Nigeria a sense of belonging. President Buhari was criticized for saying that he will not treat those that gave him 97% vote same way we treat those that gave him 5% vote. And we saw that in his appointment. And um, unfortunately, President Tinubu is following suit also in this appointment. I give you an example, a few examples, uh, apart from the legal issues. We saw the list of ministers, um, a situation where people queried, you know, appointment of ministers and some persons who had NYC carryovers, you know, as um, ministers. I, I, I think, you know, it was a sour one for, for the administration. And then you started counting, you know, all um, of the, you know, what do you call, let me use the Nigerian palace, the juicy appointment we're going in one direction. Even amongst the Western states, some even allege that, you know, most of these appointments were cornered to, you know, people in Lagos, the, you know, the Westerners in Lagos are not even, you know, with the spread. So, um, yes, you can say some of these persons are people that have worked with the president before while he was governor. But then there is, being a president of Nigeria is different from being a governor. So there's need for that sense of belonging to every section of, of, of the country and not to reserve special appointment for certain persons and then the other ones just to fulfill our righteousness. You, you, you know, you decide, okay, so let's see who, who and who we can give. And then lastly on this, so that I can give the floor for Karode, um, in every parastata, there are laws setting up such parastatas and there are laws also guiding how appointment into those parastatas should be made, ministries, agencies, and parastatas. And the moment any law is violated or the laws are not observed or observed in breach, then there's certainly a problem. And, and governments need for laws. And the moment people begin to complain and point out errors in appointing, in making appointment, there's certainly, I think there's need to be a rethink in that direction and then the government so that you don't unnecessarily cut, cut controversy so you need to look back and retool your strategy Kari, uh what what are your views your summary summary of your own view about the president's the old gamut or the the the, the old appointments that the president have made from the beginning to now so uh thank you so i wish i could um disagree with um liberals but um this is one of those occasions where you know uh facts are facts i think the president's appointment had been lopsided to the south there's no point hiding this thing to the southwest of nigeria um it appears this our history of once your tribal man becomes president then it's the turn of the section of your country to uh, to to 
get more favor. And it is not just uh, Tinumbu. When Jonathan was president his first time, it was filled with people from uh, his Ijo ethnic nationality. Even where he had to go and choose uh, someone, in, as you know, that Ijo nation is spread across a very wide geographical area across states. So even when in the case of um, uh, rivers, where you, you would need to pick someone, it would be someone of Ijo heritage. So this is not new. Even Ondo. Even Ondo, when he went to Ondo, it had to be someone of Ijo um, heritage. Uh, the same thing, you can't uh, uh, watch uh, President Buhari off um, this accusation of lopsidedness. And now, disappointingly, President Tinumbu uh, seems to be carrying on in that tradition of um, once uh, you become the president of uh, a multi-ethnic, diverse country such as Nigeria, uh, with a lot of suspicion, you would favor people from your ethnic uh, group. And it's sad that quite a number of people are not talking about it. Uh, whether they don't want to be seen as um, upsetting their own um, uh, uh, people who are usually loud about this kind of um, uh, uh, clear uh, bias are not speaking out. And I think people need to start speaking out, really. Uh, so beyond the lopsidedness in their appointment, I, it's very interesting that when you even look at the appointment from the northern part of Nigeria, it's like choosing the worst of that part of Nigeria <laughs> into the cabinet. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, okay, I'm going to give not the Minister of Defense. Now, look at you, the Minister of Defense. I'm going to give, <laughs> I'm going to give the northern part of Nigeria very powerful positions, but you pick, you don't pick the best from that part of the country. So, you know, you know, they are set to fail from the word go. So even in making those, um, and then if you come to the Southwest, I think the president needs to uh, uh, take a step back. He's been a very consistent uh, person in opposition, pointing out these ills and this misadventure exactly. by previous administration. And now he's in government, he's in power. He has the absolute opportunity to do things right. Now, beyond this, I am shocked, embarrassed, disappointed at even the way appointments are being shown out like a piece of cake. You know, we have the highest number of ministers, if I'm not wrong, in the history of political appoint uh, ministers since 19, since um, Obasanjo. Uh, and we are at a point where our our resources, the finances are shaky. So the, the, the presidency is not living by the example of the people. There are there are there are organizations that are that are sort of streamlining members of staff. You know, uh, the price of the dollar to the naira, uh, the economy in itself is not um, looking good. And I think it's time the government needs to 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 sit tight and um, walk the talk. Now I'm hearing special assistant South South. Special assistant. Special assistant, not east. Not east. <laughs> That's the first time in the history of con in Nigeria that even within the president, they are creating positions. Uh, essays are regional based, you know. So I, I think uh, uh, the government needs to tell them themselves there's a need to because it, you see in politics there's what we call signaling. You know, you cannot be doing all these things and telling other people to sit tight and and, and sort of tighten their their, their belt. So I think these appointments, uh, it, 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 you see, when when it first when uh, it, it came in, even within the 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 uh, the ministers that you say are competent, take out the minister of uh, foreign affairs, take out the minister of health, you would ask yourself, what is someone like Delia Alake doing in um, in uh, mines, M uh, mineral resources, mineral resources? Uh, you would ask yourself, why do we need to have this blue economy uh, portfolio? So there are just so many things where the the president needs to just uh, uh, reflect, and those who really care about him should um, point out to him that Nigeria is not Lagos, and you cannot run the country the way uh, because in Lagos you're just dealing with um, mainly a majority Yoruba ethnic nationality, so the opposition will be from within. But in the country. The president needs to be quite sensitive uh, to this. So uh, I would score him quite low, uh, Shion, to be honest. Okay. So we're just getting started with um, uh, with the... We're talking generally now. So we'll go to some specifics. We might not be able to deal with 
all of these appointments, but we'll pick some of those who uh, some of those appointments have gotten our attention. Particularly, we've heard about Bayo Nonuga that is now being appointed uh, the special advisor to the president on information and strategy. Um, well, I'm imagining that uh, someone like Femi Fanica, his name has been omitted. Is the I've not heard anything about um, uh, <laughs> FFK. But um, Bayo Nonuga, information and strategy uh, special advisor. Uh, Ajuri Ngilale, uh, Media and Publicity, publicity Special Advisor. I don't know. Uh, so let me, quickly here, come yeah. let, let me quickly come in here. Yeah. If, if a government uh, starts appointing multiple pronged special, uh, uh, media personnel, people to speak for them, strategy, there's a problem. There is a problem. Because you actually don't need more than two, three effective communications persons you know because your work will speak for you right so it, it, it's it, it's it's uh, i don't understand what is happening to be honest uh you, we have a minister of information don't we uh uh and then we have a bio someone i have great respect for you know uh now coming in and you have a jury and recently the president appointed some sets of special advisors on media yes. and strategy. Strategy. Is there about six of six or five or six of these people to advise on media and strategy? Then you have the Minister of Information, then you have the essay, Cardi, this new Cardi, essay. That yeah. those who have argued, and I mean I I know someone who was a former minister, who, who I know, a former governor who, who said she it doesn't make sense for Nigeria to have a Ministry of Information. Every ministry in Nigeria has information department unit. The presidency has information and media unit. So what does the Ministry of Information do? Which part of government does the Ministry of Information speak for? When each ministry have their own um, information apparatus, the presidency and the president have his own information apparatus. What then is uh, in the United States? I'm not sure there is any Department of Information. I mean, just saying it loud. I don't know what to make of that clarity. Well, I, I think it, it, it makes sense to have uh, a communications person at the heart of the presidency. It makes it makes sense, but it does not make sense to have almost 12, 13 people with almost. About three of them with a, almost a cabinet-based uh, appointment, you know. So it makes sense because you have these different departments. With, so for coordination, so you could have like twenty ministries, and because it's one presidency, and they would convert the information, and you know, so that you don't have people just um, speaking from different mm -hmm. points of view. But the the shot is to have multiple cabinet-level uh, persons doing that same role, you know. And I think uh, the, the, this presidency has the clear, uh, uh, they, have, they, they have the manpower, you know, where they can streamline this role, you know. So that's where the problem, uh, let, let's, let's not deceive ourselves. It's just like job for the boys, mm. basically. Yeah. It's a reward system. Uh, uh, and this particularly, uh, when, when I get people to talk on this space, I'm, I'm actually itching to hear what Osasu Abayuana, who is also a media expert, uh, uh, will say, I uh, particularly would like to hear his view on this particular issue. But, Liberals, uh, let's go into the EFCC. There are those who have argued that the appointment of Uluko Ede is illegal. Do you agree? Uh, Chung, um, to answer your question, yes, I agree. But before I answer that, let me quickly take a bite on some of these appointments. Uh, um, like you rightly pointed out, you have a spokesperson for the presidency. Mm. You have a minister for information. You have a media advisor for information and strategy. Yeah. You have special advisors on strategy and communication. And then you now begin to, you sit down, you ask yourself, is there a difference between this information, media, communication, or are we seeing something differently? And like how they have said, really, it shows that there is problem. It shows 
you know, that there is um, a crisis of, um, what do you call it now, popularity. It also shows that, um, you know, there is, um, the, in the court of public opinion, there is a lot, you know, of um, voices against the government. And so to counter these many voices that are coming, you know, you need so many also people to speak. And this reminds me of um, the days of Gwisi were in opposition. You remember Elijah Jilai Mohammed did fantastically well as an opposition spokesperson. You know, he he was churning out reports every day. He didn't need five or ten persons to churn out reports because it was easy to point out those errors that government were not doing well. Ruben Abati, Dr. Ruben Abati was government spokesperson. But at some point, government felt he was not attacking people enough. They had needed an attack dog. And, you know, they didn't need somebody that would just be reacting. They needed somebody that would leave out the issue. And I think also this is what the same thing that this government is doing. When um, Ngelari was appointed, he said that it was going to be different, that um, uh, the government was going to be different from the previous one, information management. Truly Nigerians were going to be spoken with and not talked at. But I think this government is feeling, no, look, Ngelari is not attacking enough. You remember Bayon Nonuga, I fantastic um, communication strategist, you know, somebody that's been around for a long time and we all respect him. But to a very large extent during the campaign, I think also he threw caution to the wind and went straight into the mud. He went straight into the mud and then, you know, some of those things that he preached against, you know, he started, we started seeing him, you know, doing those same thing. And I think that's why they are bringing him now Please come replicate some of those things you did during the campaign. I don't think this is the time we need all of those mudslinging. This is the time for the government to sit back and try as much as you can, you know, to build synergy. You know, uh, through your works, like how they have said, let your work speak. Nigeria, as we speak, is battered. The government, you know, it was almost, it's almost as if the government removed subsidy from uh, petroleum. And after you remove the subsidy, you really don't know what to do. You are floating the dollar, and after floating the dollar, you like you're tr doing trial and error with policies, and and so it is not a time to begin to look for many hands to try to speak for what is not there. If you do what is right, some of us will come out and say, "Yes, government has done well here." When you do not do well, it behoves on us also to come out and say the government is not doing well. Then now coming to the EFCC Act, I think um, the EFCC chairman. I also think this is one big mistake that the government ordinarily have no business making. The EFCC Act is very clear, very clear as ABC. It says a serving or retired um, a per person who had worked in government security agency or law enforcement agency with 15 years experience. Olukayo Day. We all know his, uh, 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 what do you call it, resume is out there in the public. Worked with Oshibanjo and co. And I would want to say, you know, um, maybe because of that relationship and the closeness between Oshibanjo and Magu, he was made chief of staff to Magu. He acted there for two years and subsequently was elevated to the secretary of the commission. If you look at section eight of the act, it spells out the functions of a secretary is merely admin and bookkeeping. And so, when you now go further, you hear that the person must have cognate experience in a cognate, 15 years cognate experience. Show what is cognate. Cognate means related. 15 years. So, if we're looking at related, the act already stated the requirement. And so, related experience to experience of somebody that has served in security, government security, or law enforcement agency. Oluka Ade has only said four years in EFCC. So you can't say he has 15 years related experience. People are saying he's been practicing law for 22 years. She has been practicing law for close to 30 years. Does that not mean I have cognate experience in law enforcement agencies because I've handled a few cases, you know, that has to do with EFCC? That the answer is no. So this is a very simple test. 
the fact that you're so much in a hurry to put one of your boys or one of your men or, or just stand the law on its head, considering the fact that when you were in opposition, you consistently, you know, told Nigerians how it can be done better without breaking a sweat. And now you are there, people are going to go back to all of the statements that you made while you were in opposition, all of those press releases issued by Alaji Lyman. And the only uh, conclusion you can get is that this government is gradually, and not even gradually, is speedily getting it, getting it wrong. And the saddest part of it is that, you know, when a man is lost and does not know that he's lost, it, it's too early in the day for them to be standing law on its head or for them to be observing the law in breach. Because if you start this way, what you are indirectly telling the same EFCC is that you can, you know, violate the laws with impunity and there would be any problem. But some, conclusively, some persons have argued that it doesn't matter who heads the EFCC. Mm -hmm. If we say it doesn't matter, what you are also telling the EFCC is that you can arrest people without uh, 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 regards to the rule of law. It doesn't matter. The police can, can do and undo. It doesn't matter. The government can, you know, violate the law. It doesn't matter. A society that does not anchor its practice and procedures on the rule of law, I tell you, nobody wants to, to do business in such society. People will not be comfortable because they know that the law is not observed in such society. Okay. So, liberals, quickly. There are three uh, criteria which you have, uh, which the section uh, of the EFCC Act 2004 uh, as stipulated. And I'd like to ask you uh, if you can just tell me yes or no to or, uh, whether or not Oluko Ede ticks the box, uh, legally speaking. So the first criteria is whether is a retired or serving uh, officer of a security or law enforcement agency. True or false? False. Is he, False. Is he in any, has he attained the position of a rank of assistant commissioner of police or equivalent? True or false? The answer is, the answer is a no also. Does he possess 15 years, nothing less than 15 years cognate experience? The answer is a no because um, the, when we use the word cognate, we tend to confuse Nigerians. Cognate means related. Is his experience, his four years experience in EFCC, is he related to the requirements spelled out in the EFCC Act? The answer is no. Is 22 years practice, can he equate, can he, he equate the 15 years that we're talking about? It is, it's, it's not related. It's a private practice. It's not even a government practice. The law strictly stipulate government security or law enforcement agency. 15 years related experience cannot equate uh, uh, 22 years practice at the bar cannot equate that 15 years experience in government where law enforcement agency. So your final answer is Oluka Ede's appointment is illegal. Olufka Ode's appointment, looking at the three criteria that you have listed also, it's illegal and it's in it, and it's in non compliance with the provisions of the EFCC Act, which that is, is threatening of the EFCC. Which is the and you cannot appoint the chairman yeah. first and foremost. Yes, the establishing act. Mm -hmm. You can appoint the chairman and, and that chairman is going to function in an establishment and his appointment violates the same law that the chairman is going to use to function. Okay. So and I'll go to this. This particular position is one of such positions that has to be confirmed by the Senate. Although, yeah. in the case of yes. Magu, rejected, <laughs> rejected, but yet, the, the appointor has insisted that he must stay. Albeit, against the will yeah. of the confirming authority. Now, uh, yeah. do you see the kind of Senate that we have, any opposition, based <laughs> on the point of law that they might reject Olukoyede when he appears before them? Um, Shil, first and foremost, let me quickly um, um, give kudos to the senator representing me at the National Assembly, uh, Senator Adam Soshomole, 
And he was the only senator that I saw spoke up, despite being close to the president. People like that who are close to the president, who you feel should be psychophantic, you know, spoke out vehemently, you know, pointing out the errors to the, to, to the president. People like that, we need more people like that in the Senate who they will be able to point out your faults so that you'll be able to correct them. But I can tell you, to answer your question, take Senator Godswill Fabio, the Senate president, a senator who derives pleasure in wearing a cap with the president in senior. How do you expect? It's like almost be psychopathic to the president, worshipping Mr. President. You know, is almost like, you know, anything the president wants, we will do. So how do you expect a, such a Senate headed by such a man to, to scrutinize or reject, you know, uh, nominees from Mr. President? I think the man whose own was even, um, uh, uh, at least you would say that the Senate was, was, was um, uh, firm, uh, other Saraki, to have rejected, you know, that nomination on the allegations. At the end of the day, the people that eulogize that nomination, look at how Mago eventually, uh, you know, ended. So in this same vein, I do not, I do not see Akpabio, Akpabio doing anything close to what Saraki did. At the end of the day, even if the entire Senate, you have the nays, I know just like uh, Ahmed Lawa, the Akpabio's eyes would have it on that day because certainly, that is what the president of the day wants. And it's obvious that the man worships, you know, by his body language, worships the ground mm -hmm. on which the president stands because it's almost as if, you know, all he wanted is life ambition. He's been a minister, he's been a governor. Now he's a Senate president. And the man that made it happen for him, you know, anything he wants, he would do. So I don't see Akbabio rejecting the nomination, despite the fact that this is a violation of the law that the ballot be made. Okay, so there are those who believe, liberals, that Olukoyede has 22 years of lawyering, of law practice, and is a regulatory compliance consultant and specialist in fraud management and corporate intelligence with extensive experience in the operations of the EFCC. Does that suffice? And I'd like to add this. Uh, to how I'd like you to respond. If Senate confirms Olukoyede, and I'm trying to play the devil's advocate here, if the Senate confirms Olukoyede, uh, does Olukoyede's appointment fall within what, uh, in the school of uh, uh, the debate or over local standard in law, where Ganifa Emi had come out to say, when well, anything that affects the Nigerian people, is of public interest when the supreme court of nigeria was trying to define what is the public interest in the realm of local standard does this fall uh, in the realm of public interest that a lawyer like a liberal Soshoma can go to court and say i challenge the appointment of oluko um, let me answer the last question first yes uh, because some of us are even you know preparing to go to court to seek, uh, even though it doesn't need interpretation, it's very clear. Uh, remember when um, uh, defense chiefs were appointed without Senate confirmation, um, Fessos Keamu, SAN, then approached the court and the court said, look, these service chiefs by the uh, provisions of the constitution under Gulag Jonathan cannot be appointed without Senate confirmation. So in the same vein, some of us are going to go to court to challenge this appointment if they go ahead to confirm it, that, you know, we need... The, the essence of these laws is for us to seek interpretation. And the law is what the court says it is. So we're going to go to court as a public interest matter to take up such challenge. That's on one side. And then secondly, the next question is, um, uh, what do you call it, 22 years uh, uh, experience so in yeah, the practice of years law. experience yeah. is a regulatory um, show, consultant and specialist show, in fraud management. Show, and corporate intelligence with extensive, extensive experience in the operations of the ESC. Those of you who want to sure. ch challenge Oluko Ede's appointment, you need to have this information so that you will know whether sure. or not he really fits in, into the sure. job. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Let me tell you, if I reel out my resume for you, you will be marvel. You will even ask me to go ahead the FCC. 
but that does not make me qualify to head the FCC. So <laughs> by this resume, what you are telling me now, that is private practice. Thank God you didn't even mention, you know, uh, fraud, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, experts in government um, uh, security or government enforcement agent. That is the law. I really don't, do not have a problem with him as a person, as a colleague. I should be, even be happy that my colleague is the head of EFCC. But what I am saying is that by the enabling law, this resume and these qualifications that you have read out are his qualification in his private capacity as a practicing lawyer in Yemi Oshibanjo and Co. The other required uh, 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 resume is a resume probably from acting as chief of staff to Magu as chairman of EFCC, and then maybe a secretary. Cumulatively, all of this is four years, show four years. And so you can't say that because, yes, you've acted, you've worked in EFCC for four years, and so that should also, you know, um, be taken as cognate experience, 15 years cognate experience. If we do that, show it means the driver of the chairman of EFCC would can head the EFCC tomorrow because after all, he worked in EFCC. Just attend some private, um, go get some uh, certification, and you know, you become EFCC chairman, contrary to the provisions of the law. It also means that a plumber in EFCC, after all, he's worked in EFCC, whether the experience is related or not, just use the word cognate, leave out the, the related. That's what we are saying here. So, your, your experience as a private legal practitioner, fantastic as it may be. Awesome, but that cannot take the place of the 15 years related experience in these three areas that were mentioned either serving or retired law enforcement agent. You have worked in law in a law enforcement agency for four years, two years as a chief of staff, two years as secretary of the commission. Even as a secretary, you were dealing with the files and bookkeeping of the commission. So I think the first thing is um, shown consistently every chairman that has headed the FCC had been shown the exit door using the same method, being accused of the same thing, which is abuse of office. Right. I think that the first thing to do would be let the government look at the enabling act of the FCC, amend the law, you amend the law, unbundle EFCC, maybe change the requirement for becoming a chairman, and then you can now bring in whoever you want. But leaving the law as it is, and then now trying to shove that appointment down our throats, saying that we, we shouldn't talk about it for me, that is where the challenge is. All of this uh, resume that you have read out, read out are in his private capacity as a private legal practitioner, not as somebody who has worked in government for a, a law enforcement agency for 15 years. No. So, okay, quickly, because I like to bring, uh, we still have uh, one or two major uh, agency that has a controversy around it. So, I'd like to ask you quickly, uh, Mr. Oshoma, uh, in all of these, from my own findings, uh, there are those, there are two categories of field operatives in the EFCC. There are those who are police officers and uh, there are those who are operations who are trained operation in, uh, investigators but they are not police yeah. officers some of them are trained yes. uh, in the russian intelligence agencies some of them are trained by the fbi but they are not police officers but there yeah. is uh i mean yeah. they, they suspend they law enforcement agents anyway uh, anyways so yeah. There, there is since EFCC started, um, uh, there are the the the, the set of uh, Bauer was the cost one. So yes, cost one. And there are those who believe that in the cost one, there are a few people who are in that class. And in fact, in the cost two, there are those who have attained fifteen years of cognate experience by next year, early next year. Mm -hmm. If cost two wouldn't have attained. 50 years cognate experience by this year. Um, in that sense, uh, what do you think could be the remedy? If, for example, and I imagine that 
the SDF's office, the chief of staff's office to the president and the presidency would have gotten some legal opinion and advice on this. And we have a very revered attorney general of the federation, Mr. Latif Agbemi. I mean, how could they have made this error? Don't you think they, might, they must have thought about this through and through? Femi Bajabi Amela is a lawyer. Latif Agbemi is an advocate of Nigeria. Wouldn't they have looked at the law? I mean, this error looks too expensive. Don't you think, Liberals? Um, Sean, you see, the challenge here, first and foremost, um, um, is the fact that well, Latif Agbemi, has, for example, while uh, during screening, he referred specifically to the EFCC Act and even volunteered or, or recommended that the EFCC should be unbundled because I have never seen anywhere in the world, as Kyle is in UK, he would also tell you, where the powers to manage assets recovered is in the hands of the same man who is investigating and recovering those assets. The powers to prosecute is also in the hands of, of the man who is investigating. You know, see, when you investigate, the beauty of it is let somebody else look at the file robustly and, you know, uh, determine whether the ingredients for prosecuting had been established. But when a situation where if I want, if I do not like Sheung or I like him, I have, I, I, I have an arrangement with Sheung, I arrest him, and then after investigation, he settles me, I now remove some, um, what do you call it, um, uh, going to court, I charge him for something I know he can easily get away with. But if somebody else is reviewing the file, and at the end of the day, the person, there is no relationship between me, Sheung, and that person, the person is going to look at the file independently. If somebody is also managing the assets recovered, those assets will be accountable to the federal government. But a situation where all of those assets recovered are still in the hands of EFCC, and in some cases you hear that they have been auctioned without directive from the office of the, of the attorney general, this is what consistently has left pre previous chairman into trouble. So uh, uh, the uh, uh, current Leonard Attorney General recommended the unbundling. I would have expected that after that recommendation, having settled that in office, the first thing, there is no time limit for an acting chairman. You have somebody who's already acting in his stead. And so I would have expected that the government will put the pillars standing the EFCC, that is the law, in place, amend the act as recommended by the Attorney General, and then, even if you want to tweak the uh, requirement for becoming a chairman, you can do that. But in the absence of that, it is typical of government, this attitude of we can do anything and go away with it. After all, we're in government now. I think this is what is happening. It might not even have passed the recommendations and the advice, might not even see the desk of the Attorney General or the, the Chief of Staff. The question is, who is recommending this person? Okay, yes. Can he do the job? Yes. Oh, that is why they are arguing. Otherwise, they would have told you, oh, sorry, there is a mistake here. We'll reconsider this appointment. After all, some persons were appointed as ministers. When they discovered that they were mistakes, they rescinded the appointment and subsequent names were nominated. So this idea of, yo, you have people in government. In uh, Buhari's uh, government, you had an attorney general who consistently, despite obvious provisions of the law, mm. violated the law. In some cases, we won't tell you that they are still studying the judgment, but he was a senior advocate. So these are the challenges. And like I say consistently, if you have a society where the rule of law cannot stand tall and firm, especially when it has to do with government, mm. it becomes, no matter if you like, globetrot the whole world, Nobody will take you seriously. Right. Nobody will come and do business with you so, because they do not believe that if there's a crisis, mm -hmm. that there will be law that will protect and guide them because your laws are not observed. So, quickly, uh, are you privy to Justice Salami Committee report? Uh, which, that's for, so, that's, for some reason, I understand that Allah look how this name was mentioned. I am not saying this, 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 some persons have raised this issue. And I do not want to work on act on, on uh, conjecture. Some person said you acted under a chairman, you were chief of staff to a chairman, 
You also were a secretary to that chairman. That chairman was indicted, seriously. Indicted and removed unceremoniously from office. But the chief of staff and the secretary is standing. You know why? Because the chairman was never prosecuted. So the report also is kept in the dark. So you can't really speak to it. And because of some days like this, so leave out. And then, so that's why some, some laymen are arguing and asking, how can you be a chief of staff to a chairman and the secretary, the same chairman that was indicted, and you come out clean and unblemished? So what the government is doing is the government is further dousing itself in, in PMS and lights a, a striking a matches very close to itself. And at the end of the day, you already have a lot of voices that are condemning the government. There are, as we speak now, there are controversies on uh, certificate forgery and all of that. Even that's why the fact that some of us believe that the Supreme Court, this is a matter that cannot pass the Supreme Court at this stage, but you can't take it away from the public opinion, the court of public opinion. So I do not think having a battle with that is enough already. So now begin to make appointment that start law on his head. It is obvious that this government is basically just looking out, out looking for trouble or the derived pleasure in controversy. That's why now they are running Heta Skeeter looking for special advisors on media strategy, special advisor on communication and uh, uh, strategy, miscommunication, disinformation, and information and all of that. You don't need all of these things if you comply strictly with the law. So would they say if you sing good songs, preach good gospels, and do good deeds. If you like, build your house in the thick of the forest, the world will create a path to it. But if otherwise, if you like, live in a mansion in the city, people will throw stones at you. Uh, Kaori, I, I need to go to the NDDC because I know you are from the, oil, the great oil-producing state of Ondo State. And uh, there are a lot of issues around the NDDC appointment, the board, uh, appointment of the board of the NDDC. This is another issue. Uh, there is the appointment of a 25-year-old chairman of FIRMA, who is the son to a former Borno State uh, governorship uh, aspirant, Kashim Imam. Um, you know, we'll finish from the University of Brighton. There are a lot of people who has read us. But let me get your view uh, on, on this Oluke Day's appointment and the legality of it, because that's that's a major issue that we're looking at. You see, when when uh, the we started hearing the rumor that Olu Koyedi was going to be appointed, I just said to people now, uh, President Tinubu is not that politically naive to pick someone that will just bring in controversy to his government. But sadly, I got that wrong. Uh, I think liberals has delve into why this gentleman is not qualified to be the head of EFCC. You see, the EFCC is very important when it comes to where we are today. Corruption is at the core, you know, both in government, outside of government, individuals, corruption is, as, is at the core of the issues that are facing us. And I think where I would go slightly differently is that, you know, maybe the government or government before uh, Tinumbu and, uh, and Buhari know that we do not have a, an opposition within the country that would um, focus on things that needs to be highlighted. You see, this issue about certificate or no certificate, this is an opportunity where the opposition in parliament will raise their voice People need to go to court and challenge this appointment by the, 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 the government. So I, I don't think we need to overflow the issue of uh, Oluke. It's, it's, it's quite clear that it's an appointment made, you know, it's, it's just like robbing insult on injury. And I think the government would, uh, would need to get a clear message from the different discordant tones. Now, if we want to go into NDDC, <laughs> you would... Um, you you just wonder <laughs> if the president is aware of what is going on within his presidency. It just it just seems like some people are just sort of turning out appointments and calling on people. You take this without making any background check. 
without looking at the appropriateness of um, whether that person is qualified to 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 head the agency they have been uh, told to come and head. And I'm, for the very first time, I'm quite speechless, you know, because I, I expected something, you know, like with the experience of the current president that this is going to be a different government. Go ahead, Cardi. Hello? Are you there? All right. Liberos, are you there? Uh, it seems Cardi... Yes, I can hear you. Yes, yeah. I can hear you. Cardi's network is ghosting. So, uh, your own view, uh, until when we get Cardi back, your own view about the NDDC. What do we know? What are the facts? Yeah, you see, um, I want to start from um, the NDDC so that people Okay. Liberals Network 2 is ghosting us. It's, it's, uh, there seems to be some issues. Uh, um, you know, um, can you hear me? All right, go ahead now. You're, you're not. You can you hear me? Yeah, it was. Uh, there was. There were glitches on your. Uh, on your. Yeah. So yeah. go ahead now. I think. Yeah. Yeah, you're back. <laughs> anytime. Any, anytime I hear glitches now, I make come to mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, if you look at section four of the of the NDDC, I can say, um, you know, section three, uh, first and foremost, um, no, section two establishes the commission governing board that's um they shall be, which shall consist of a chairman one person who shall be an indigenous of an oil producing a, uh, area to represent each of the oil producing member states that's abia Aquaibon, Bayesa state cross river state delta state edo state imo state ondo state and river state um and then if you now go to section four it says the office of the sh chairman shall rotate amongst the member states of the commission in the following alphabetical order abia states aquaibom state Bayesta state cross river state delta state edo state emo state odo and then river so the office of the chairman shall be rotated if abia takes it the next shall be aquaibom and then followed by Bayesta. after Bayesta, it is cross river that we have and then after crossover comes Delta. Yeah, me. Edo. Okay. Um, uh, I think a card is back. Okay, now, okay. So you're, I will you're, you're back. I will you're leave back. the floor for him. Oh, yeah. All right. No, let me allow you to land on it. Then Cardi will come in. Because you so, are. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, so if you now go to um, Section 8 of the Act, um, it talks about the powers of the board. But specifically, um, Section 12, of the act says there shall be for the commission a managing director and two executive directors who shall be indigenous of oil producing areas starting with the member state of the commission with the highest production quotum of oil and shall rotate amongst member states in the order of production so you you see the the essence of drafting these laws is so as there should be a guide to be followed the law didn't say may the law says shall, which is compulsion. So anything outside of this prescribed form, I can tell you, show that is completely against the provisions of the Establishing Act. So there are issues also which is captured in the Establishment Act of the NDDC that those states that are oil producing, that the oil producing areas that yeah, yeah, appointments yeah. shall be made from the oil producing areas yeah. and there are those who have yeah, agitated yeah. for example in ondo state that over the last few appointments it has not been like that uh, there are those who argue also that even the air sh airship of the end it is in terms of operation um uh, Tamiya Laibe and uh, dr sam obuku um who is at an extension of to know what is the legality of that appointment in the eye of the law. Kaode, you want to come in? Sorry, yeah. be quickly, before Kaode comes in, Yeah. also, as I speak now, as I last week, there was also um, an agitation from the same ENDDC that 
all of the um, uh, what do you call it directors from Edo State that were in the head office had been transferred out of the uh, head of the commission, and that all of them had been transferred to the zonal office. So there are so much, so many allegations, you know, and consistently NDDC had been in the eye of the storm in the news for the wrong reason. Remember, it was the same NDDC that the chairman fainted. It was the same NDDC that we had. If you knew near me, if you acquired me, I knew near you. Where the a, a minister, a minister was, there was an allegation against, you know, a minister by the MD that he wanted them um, to have them, um, you know, whatever you, you you call it, some of the things we can't even say in public. It, it's, it's quite unfortunate. Hon honor sorry, honorable, honorable, like honorable, off your mic. That too. The popular uh, honorable uh, of your uh, mic. <laughs> so uh, yeah. they, they said that things that happen in NDDC can make anybody faint. God, go ahead. Yeah, so, uh, so you know what I'm actually quite concerned about is the... So in Ondo State, if you know our state very well, our riverine community and the uh, oil producing community are the most backward in terms of development. Uh, let me put a caveat here. The fact that you make an appointment from that region does not mean development is going to co come to the region. We've True. had we've had uh, we've had people appointed claiming to represent the south south of Nigeria, and nothing has gone to the south south region. But that shouldn't be an excuse for things to be done the way the letter of the law says it should be done. Like in the case of Ondo, where for two different times uh, you've had people from Akure, you know, representing on those state in NDDC. And you have areas like the Ilaje, Aroboijo areas just abandoned. And I think it's something that needs to be looked into because one of the one of the driving force of development is actually when you have these political appointees, they would come to the local area. They should be able to identify the issues that affect this local area and attract investment and development to the area you know so for me and i've said this again and again that the government needs to take a pause for me i'll just think the president needs to just look get the chief of staff and say look what is happening within this presidency in terms of how we identify people to come into government and support government to deliver the goals of government maybe right maybe, now, maybe maybe the, maybe the presidency needs a special advisor on appointment <laughs> Appointments. <laughs> I mean, because because some of the things you guys, it is what you guys have said, they're looking yeah. embarrassing. It shouldn't be coming from the highest office in the land, where you imagine that you have security, you have uh, government officials who have institutional memory, who have all the records that they need to make appointment, and, and errors are coming out of these appointments. They could be human uh, errors, but not at the uh, magnitude uh, that are embarrassing. Except if these are intentional and political in nature. And particularly, Sheo, uh, for a government that is transiting from his own political party, it wasn't like the last president was from an opposition party. So, and we were, told, we were told there was a handover note, you know, and um, we were also told there was a coercion between the incoming administration and the former administration. So you would, you don't expect this kind of mistakes from a government that is that has been in power for for quite a number of times. So it's not it's not like they're they are new, you know, in government. And that is where it is worried. You know, it gets to the point where people would um for those of us who have followed politics over a number of years in Nigeria, these kind of issues happen when you have gatekeepers in government. There's no point us pretending, you know. And what do I mean by having gatekeepers? You know, you have a president, but you have one or two persons who are in charge or who have the say over the appointments of individuals. And the president or the principal is far removed from this decision. You know, and this is when you would you would you would find yourself in a situation where an appointment is made and it becomes quite embarrassing to the to to to, to the government. But, yeah. It is this distraction that is unhelpful where you have a, a country where at the at the rate we're going, where a lot of people are not sure where they're going to get the next meal. You know, the government is facing the challenge of the monetary policy, security challenges across the board, uh, uh, the issue of insecurity in, 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 the, in the different parts of the country. 
So this government needs to stabilize itself and just sort of stop this self-inflicted controversies that, is, that you don't need. Within the government, I, I would expect that within the next three to four months that there will be a cabinet reshuffle. That having tested this set of ministers, you now start putting uh, square pe square pegs in square uh, square holes. You know, you 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 now know, start doing the right thing for the interest of the country, and I don't think it is it is too late. And I'm always a firm believer of giving government a chance. You know, we it's four months plus now that uh, uh, Mr. This government has come into into part into office, and more voices, particularly if friendly voices are speaking out. Maybe they would understand, okay, this is not coming from opposition. This is not an issue coming from the obedience or the PDP or what have you. These are just people who would not usually want to criticize the government. And if, if voices like that start speaking now, then you need to change course, Sheo. Hmm. Okay, so I need to get people from the space to uh, then speak. Uh, but there is one appointment which is the chairman of Pharma. Uh, that's the federal... Um, uh, What's it called now? Uh, let me get the right. Uh, road maintenance agency. My road, road. Yes, yes maintenance road. agency. Absolutely. Uh, engineer Imam Ibrahim Kashim Imam, who incidentally, as uh, there is a coincidence of name and identity, who is father, is a very popular politician from Borno State. And uh, in fact, it, when the names were announced, it was his father's picture that was first put out there before it was being corrected. And the presidency had actually put his own picture. He's a 25-year-old uh, gentleman, born in uh, 1998 or so, uh, who I understand finished from the University of Brighton. He's an engineer who I understand also had worked somehow with the Minister of uh, Works, uh, um, uh, Dave Umahi. But I don't know if uh, liberals, you found some of the controversies online, especially, about the appointment of this young man. Um, yes, I, um, I have um, 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 seen um, quite a few of them. And, uh, you know, the issue is the um, uh, first and foremost uh, show. You, this is a country where you have a lot of uh, young people at that age out of school looking for jobs. And um, yes, it is, it, even in America, you hear people talk about, yes, once you're from some specific family, there are things that are naturally easy for you. Um, and so you say the government will want to give opportunity to young people. But, uh, show for a federal road maintenance agency that same agency that was once headed by Ogunlewe. remember the crisis between Ogunlewe, uh, then in pdp and the lagos state government we're talking about federal road maintenance uh, before i even go there let me even first and foremost say that in those days all of these highway maintenance agencies you have a site engineer in almost all the highway so that you don't need to rush to Lagos, the Federal Highway Office, or the Minister of Works. Once there is a problem, there was budget for all of these office, offices. Now you have Federal Highway Maintenance Agencies without offices at the zonal level, or even when the offices are there, they are not. Um, there is no budget to work with. You have dilapidated roads. There is no road in Nigeria today, apart from the few major ones, that you can actually call road properly so called and yet you have an agency to maintain these roads and the best we can do is somebody who knows somebody or somebody whose father you know is high, high up there and um, he has um, worked closely related with um, the um, minister for works where was the minister for works appointed again not up to four months now and mm -hmm. then the best we could do to give a point to manage such a humongous agency is a 25 years old. And we're not even talking about offices at the zonal level now. What experience are we talking about? At, at let's say, if it's too much of a genius, 
he will finish university at 18, at the age of 18. After 18, he will do a master's for one year. That's 19. And then you do NYC. So that's um, um, 20. And you ca ca came back to Nigeria and worked on that way. And so that's enough to head an agency. He actually finished. Fedra. If he completed his NYC in August 2022, last year. So, uh, Sean, it, it is, it is, we, it, it's, it's even shameful that we're even saying these things. That's where, why agencies like this will fail even before they start. Situations, it's easy for people to say, look, um, it doesn't matter. Give this young man a chance. Give young people of his age grades. I don't know if you can hear me, Sean. Yeah, I can hear you. People of his People of his age grade are still looking for how to garner experience in the field as an engineer, whether civil or mechanical or whether road construction. Do you know why Chinese excel much more than us? A Chinese man who is a managing director or a chairman of a company, when his children graduate, they start from the basic, the lowest rank of, rank of the ladder. So they gradually climb up. So when they become MDs tomorrow, they would have understand the rudiment of every segment of the organization. But here, it is convenient for us to just, you just finish NYC. Once you know somebody that knows somebody, you can be made a minister, you can be compensated with a federal government agency or parastata, and everybody will just say, uh, is he qualified? Oh, let him go. At the end of the day, these are some of the agencies that are even hardly in the news. So you just see the young man will just be there. The experience is limited also. And the human relationship management, because which is key. We're talking about maintaining our federal highways that are almost non-existent. The human relationship management also, or, uh, or, or synergy, is, is, is hardly there. So it, it's quite yeah. unfortunate. Yes, we want young people to, to take over the space, but young people also need to have experience to be able to come on board All such right. agents. Kaude, <laughs> quickly, Kaude, before... Uh, they, they, I need to open the floor for, for yeah, people this is, coming. This is, this is one area where I would um, disagree with Liberos. I think um, if there's anything I want to commend this government for is the opportunities given to young persons. I don't think 25-year-old is too young to to add an agency if they are able to prove themselves. As, you a, know. as a chair, Kaude. As yes, a as chairman a of the board, not course, not course. not as a CEO, after, but one as year a one year after NYC, I, no, one year, year after yeah, NYC, that's slightly over a year yes. after NYC. I, I am a firm believer that you will you will be surprised at the first question we should ask is that the old people that have been heading these agencies and the board and what have you, what have they done differently? So I'm a firm believer that these young persons, even if they finish university, yes, if it's if the appointment is based on based on nepotism, uh, you, because we want a young person that you go and be the, the friend of your friend and what have you, but you will be shocked at the at the quality of young persons these days that can deliver when given those opportunities, those huge opportunities to deliver, and I definitely do not um, find have any issues there. Uh, where I, because I live in a country where you'll be surprised at uh, what a university lever of two years ago will be delivering in less than two years to the whole country. You know, so I don't think we should completely bother ourselves uh, about that. We should just be concerned about how the appointment is made. If this young person is is being appointed because they are relatives of the president or the governor, you know, so I I. I don't think it's a big uh, issue to be. At the end of the day, these right. people, Gowon became the president of Nigeria at what age? You know, and uh, then and then and led us and led us to an uh, uh, um, a war that we had no business yeah. even fighting in the first place. Yeah, but, but quickly, Kayode, Kayode, yeah. quickly, quickly. Yeah. Let me say this: I do not have a problem with the young people manning off. Yes. This young man graduated, made first class in McIC, just completed in NYC in August 2022. August 2022, 
last and year after the election say last year that's just last year say last year i said i can just yeah. one year yes last year august last year yeah. and then after the election he was appointed special advisor to Omahi. Yeah. The moment Omahi was appointed, he was appointed special advisor to Omahi. And then the next thing, boom, he's appointed as a chairman of a federal road maintenance agency. What experience are we looking at here? Are we saying that, yes, well, in as much as we need young people to man, you know, spaces, we also need... You know, some of these young persons let us have people who the, the, the have girl, experience you know, in these yeah. areas. So, in order, in order to, so what I would ask, you know, in the case of the EFCC, the law stipulates the number of experience the EFCC chairman must have. If these agencies, if the law says this young person must have this number of experience and he was appointed, then we have an issue. But if the law does not say he must have 10 years experience, two years postgraduate experience, uh, 10 months postgraduate experience. I think he's qualified, if he's qualified to, uh, to look, 25 year old plan, plotted, pl uh, plan coups in other parts of Africa, they become heads of states in those, in those countries. Uh, so I, I don't, I think we can, sometimes you need to, uh, to uh, empower these people, give them responsibilities, and then they should be judged by their track record. If they are not violating not any the laws, responsibilities that are not bigger than them, yeah. it is good to give responsibility. But the chairman, you just the you chairman. Of, that's what I was NYC. emphasizing. Yeah. That is yeah. going to you just as the NYC. chairman of the board. Now, now, so I, I agree. So, yeah. This young man is yeah. intelligent. So, he made a first class. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. So I'm saying, uh, but John, you like, just, John, like Pat Tutomi was appointed into. Uh, to advise a former president at the age of uh, 27. Now, 27. the question yeah, is that the, yeah, the question is that chairman of a board, you actually need to know, you need to have sat on a board. You need to understand how a board operates. You need to understand <laughs> it's not a CEO, it's not a day-to-day -day running of... Uh, no, but you're, but Sean, but Sean, you're already judging the guys. I'm not judging. I am saying, I'm saying, saying yeah, for you know, example, no, Kelly, yeah. just a moment. Say for example, yeah. and I and I put this. I mean, this is a very uh, delicate example to make. Uh, yeah. It's just like uh, uh, piloting an aircraft, and you say, yeah. "Oh, he made a first class, first class out of the out of the aviation school," uh, and he just finished. And then seven. you give him a Boeing, and he now say, "Okay, him Boeing, let him take you from Nigeria to Atlanta, or let him take you to to London." I'm not sure, Kaede, that you get on yeah. that aircraft. Now, the yeah, but, that's the, those, but, but those are false equivalents. Those no, are completely no, 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 Gary, false equivalents. Gary, these are based on experience, knowledge, yeah. and track record. Because before okay, let me you ask can you, be... Let me, a, ask, let me a, ask a quick question yeah. to both of you here. What are the exp uh, legal experience qualifications to become the famous chairman? Does the, does the law say you must have six months postgraduate experience, ten months, ten years postgraduate experience? No, the law does not say that. But so it's a matter of where just as we are making an assumption that this young man is going to fail in this position. No. You have young people at the age of 19 creating multinational corporations by themselves, uh, uh, multinational agencies raking in millions of dollars across the glo globe. You have you have uh, you have 23 year olds becoming uh, chairman of boards of very big uh, tech companies. You know, uh, they, they come, some of them even leave a university to establish these companies and they rate in incomes that are more than nation states in Africa. So I think we need to catch up with the rest of the world. I know that young, we, we shouldn't uh, underestimate the capacity in terms of this generation that somebody can leave university today and they have the capacity to deliver in positions where the law does not say you must have. Uh, Kaede, actually, I am not underestimating this mental yeah. academic capacity yeah. uh, i'm in fact i would be happy if the young kashim imam performs miracle in that uh, um, i mean i'll personally be, be glad if he's made the md and the ceo of firma where he will have the ends on day-to-day -day ability to run that organization i'm just saying that to become for example Kaudi, the chairman of the board of force bank the chairman of the board of Dangote, the chairman of the board of Unilever. These are conglomerates. These are 
big organization that you need experience to run the board. You see people who are sitting on the board who have a lot of experience. But look, I'm just posing is a poser to say, yeah. can a 25 year old be a board chairman? Maybe it might be more I, effective. I, but I, is I, a poser. I'm saying yes, yeah. it can. I'm saying yes, a 25 year old, and I've seen across the globe 25 year old. People younger than twenty-five year old holding such position, positions of right. responsibility. Let me let me open the let me open the the, the floor now. Uh, let's go onto Twitter space. I like to hear what people's views are. To know, I mean, the appointment made by President Tinubu, legal issues have been drawn, nepo, uh, nepotism issues drawn into it, social issues, uh, issues of balance, issues of politics have been drawn into it. What do you think, ladies and gentlemen? The floor is open. The mic is on. Let me see whose hand is on. The first person I can see here on the floor is Omar Ninja. Omar Ninja, your hand is on and your mic is uh, on too. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you so much, um, Shum. So, first off, I noticed that while everybody spoke about um, the young man's age, there was very little emphasis on his qualification. Other than the I, fact said that he he first class. With the first class I said he mid first class. I said no. I said no. No, sorry. Other than the fact that he graduated with a first class in his first degree, he also has a master's in um, engineering business management, and he also graduated with honors in that engineering business management talking about square pegs in square holes i mean round pegs and round holes for me i feel like what i've heard today is everybody here telling me that i cannot head a government agency because i am 22 and we have cases in the past in different places for example kylie Overson in usa north dakota was elected as the tax commissioner of north dakota at the age of age of 25 the tax mm -hmm. commissioner of that state at the age of 25 and she was able to achieve her aims and her objectives so why is it that the moment his age comes up it isn't about okay so we have this reason to believe he's incompetent you understand but it is just that the age makes us believe he's incompetent. It is a it is an issue of guilty until proving innocent. Ignoring all the good things he has done to say, oh, we still don't believe this because he's not as old as us. Because I know for a fact, this is not an insult to anybody. I have seen lawyers, old lawyers speak, and I felt like they were saying jargons. I have seen government officials that are supposed to be very knowledgeable, speak, and I felt like they were saying jargons. Age does not guarantee your qualification. Your knowledge, what you can do, your, your sense of innovation. Mark Zuckerberg was the chairman of the board of Facebook before the age of 25. He was the CEO. Yes, Absolutely. he was also the chairman of his board. Same with the guy that um, started Snapchat. He was the chairman of his board. And at the age less than 25. We've seen these people succeed in the past. So why will we come and say it is when it comes to our own turn? Because the, 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 somebody tried to paint the picture that this man only got to where he is, not because of his first class, not because of the honors he had in his master's in um, engineering business management, not because of any of that, but simply because he knows somebody. That is the image that somebody here tried to paint over and over again. That is and true. For me, I feel like that, that is, is true. insulting to the man because he that is put true. his efforts to get those results. He put in the work that is true. to get that first class. And somebody is coming to down talk it, to downplay it, and say, oh, it's because he knows somebody. Please, I don't know anybody. And me, I want to be solved. And I'm putting <laughs> oh, man, I, yeah, yeah. my ass off yeah. for it. Yeah, thanks so much. You, you have had your say. Yeah, I mean, I love this. Uh, I mean, the essence of this is for us to learn and exchange out this view. And even if the young Kashim Imam is listening to this podcast, it's a challenge to him that yeah. Nigerians think that you may not have the experience, you may have the knowledge, but they are expecting you to perform miracle. 
Thank you so much, Oma Ninja. Let me bring in yet another person that I've been itching to hear from, in, and that's uh, Osasu Obayuana. Uh, I can see your hand on. Uh, please go ahead. Your mic is on. Uh, good evening, Sharon. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, you, good evening. You, you wanted me. You wanted me to talk about the appointment of Bayon Anuga. But before I go there, I would like to respond to what Omar Niger just said. Um, I mean, I don't hide my age. I'm 54 now. Um, and when I started, when I know, and you, when I started, you sound like I, an ancestor right now, Osasu. <laughs> yeah, to a lot of people. Yeah, an old fogey to a lot of people. Um, but when I started in journalism, I was 18. And I started writing for The Guardian in Nigeria at 18. I was in my third year law degree, or my law degree at university. So I'm the last person to be ageist when it comes to these things, because somebody trusted me an editor trusted me at that age to even go and cover big games for the newspaper those were things that journalists who were far older than me were not even given the opportunity to do so the issue for me is not the age of the young man the issue is the experience of the young man if you've just done a first degree and you've done a master's degree there's no doubt you have the academic knowledge that's clear obviously if you've got a first class and you did a master's you have the academic knowledge that's not the issue but i mean after you've got those things you need a few years of experience to manage a board to manage a federal agency that is responsible for roads over a country for 200 million people this is not a joke so we need to be serious about the kind of people we appoint to positions if after the age of 25, he had had two, three, four years, five years experience, and he was appointed at the age of 30 with a track record that people would see, nobody's going to say, oh, at 30, he's too, uh, too uh, young. Awesome, awesome. But, we, but, 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 we, but we need to be serious about these issues and to be honest and straightforward about them. Because we are, I mean, we know how, I mean, in Nigeria, how bad the roads are. People don't travel by road because they are bad or because they are scared of being kidnapped or being attacked by robbers on the road. And these are issues that we need to solve because our roads, the bad roads are responsible for even expensive food. Because when the farmers finish, uh, get, get their crops and they are trying to transport them, Many of them rot on the way just because the lorries get into potholes, they crash, they, they can't get them out, and the food rot, so it's happening a lot. So we need to appreciate the seriousness of this issue. I don't want to disrespect young people. I am the last person because I was given opportunities when I was very young. So I'm not going to discountenance young people at all. But please, let us not set them up to fail as well. You need to put them in the right position. You need to find the right kind of young people with the experience that gives them the gravitas to do the kind of job you are going to give to them. So that's all I'm going to say on that particular issue. Now, let me address the question that you wanted me to answer uh, while you were talking to Liberus. Um, so <laughs> I'm not going to uh, make I'm not going to uh, hide my feelings on this issue. I think that if you are a spokesman for the president of Nigeria, you need to have displayed a track record of honesty, fairness, justice, because you are representing the president, you are speaking to the country. I want people to tell me frankly, after the kind of statements that Bayo Onanuga wrote on Twitter about evil people and concerning the elections in Lagos State, which I'm sorry to say uh, looked like the, the writing of somebody who is ethnically bigoted. I don't know any other way to put it. How can this person be appointed into the, to the government of Nigeria after making such statements? for which he has not apologized till today. In fact, he doubled down on those statements and said that he has no regret for them. 
I, 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 I'm gobsmacked by this type of behavior and that a president It's interesting that it is Bayo Nanuga that announced the appointment himself. As far as I know, uh, the State House has not announced the appointment. He announced it himself. So is it really true? I assume it must be because I, I want to believe he wouldn't just announce it without knowing that he's been given the appointment. But I don't know why the State House has not announced it. So I, I just find it strange. But with regards to his suitability, I am sorry he's not suitable to serve this country. Not by a long shot. Mm. Those were those were very hard. Uh, I mean, the usual Sasu way. Anyway, uh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sasu, uh, for for your thoughts there. Uh, but but before you go though, do you think that yes. we need a Ministry of Information, considering that the presidency has a communication apparatus and setup? And there is also, in every ministry and parasitical of government, there are departments and, uh, of communications and information in any of those. So you ask yourself, what would the Ministry of Information be saying that those ministries cannot say for themselves? It's a good question. And my answer to that would be, I don't see the need for duplication. If you have a presidential spokesman, you have a presidential media team, and the presidential media team has to liaise with the media teams in all the ministries anyway. So why do you have a ministry of information? What are they going, what does the minister of information do that the presidential spokesman The manager in TA. The manager in I'm TA. sorry, uh, I mean, okay, you, Liberos, you've actually gone to a matter that I, okay, since you, you pushed me there, I'm actually going to say something on this. So please show, per permit me. Hey, go ahead. Look, <laughs> look, um, you see, the national broadcaster is not supposed to be a government broadcaster. It is supposed to be the state True. broadcaster. Like the BBC. True. See, I mean, for those of you who know me a little bit, I have been a broadcaster for the BBC for over 20 years. Not much now, but over yeah. the last 20, 25 years. That's what I've done. And <laughs> there's always friction between the government and the BBC all the time. Because even though the BBC is publicly funded, it is independent of government and it has the ability to do its job. The NTA has not been able to function as a state broadcaster for one primary reason. And that is because this, the funding system is flawed. There is no way you can have a proper state broadcaster without Nigerians paying a license fee. Without this license fee system, the NTA is not going to be a proper state broadcaster with its funds to actually do the job the way it is meant to do. And until the funding system for the NTA and for public broadcasting in Nigeria is changed to ensure that they can actually work on behalf of the public and not for the government, because they are public institutions. They're not government institutions to serve those who are in office. They're there to serve the people of the country. Until this funding system is changed, until the appointment system for those who run these corporations are changed, we are not going to see our state broadcasters function in the way they should. Mm. Osasu, thank you so much. It's a pleasure having you on this space, and thank you that you're sharing your views. From That's your... vintage, Osasu. Yeah, uh, awesome, vintage. Awesome when, when Osasu is mm. not provoked and not provoked by anyone, uh, this is the mild Osasu and the vintage Osasu. Like you said, thank you so much. Um, I'm not as I'm not as as serious as you think, Shane. It is just that it is just that it is just that we we have come to a point in Nigeria where we must speak the truth, no matter the consequence. Mm -hmm. Because true, we have true. gotten to a point in the country where things are going down, mm -hmm. and people are seeing white, calling it black. People are seeing black, True. calling it green, and we are just supposed to keep quiet and just take these things as normal. No, we can't. Mm. And that is what makes me annoyed. Yeah. Because we, we, we can't keep on doing this because we can all see the state in which the country is now. 
it is in a very, very sad situation. Yeah. I mean, a, a, a state shown the Nigeria is spending over 90% of its income on servicing debt. How can the yes. country develop? How can it pay its bills when you are spending over 90% of your revenue mm. on debt servicing? Yeah. These are the things that Nigerians must uh, must face. So when they are promising Nigerians they are going to do this, they are going to... <laughs> where? <Assassin>. From where? <laughs> anyway, so... We'll Domo, thank you so much. Domo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, All right, let me bring you. in Adelanwa. Adelanwa at Omo Yakubu One. You have the floor now, and your mic is on. Yeah, thank you very much, Shil. So, uh, let me start by saying, when does a man come of age? And uh, for clarification, Ugulewe um, Laboros was never chairman of FEMA. He was a minister of works, oh, okay. and. What mm, what we are yeah, sorry sorry yeah yeah what we are saying here is that a a first class graduate cannot manage FEMA mm -hmm. for your let me clarify it's just for passing roads they don't build roads are you saying an engineer cannot coordinate people to patch failed roads that is what they do they are not have this they don't have the same that idea with the Ministry of Works. Are you saying that is too much for a first class graduate? That is aside. And uh, we are talking about National Assembly being a rubber stamp, in, you know, especially with the reference to the present Senate president. We have this militancy mentality in Nigeria that the National Assembly <laughs> must always be fighting with the executive. For clarification, there is nowhere in the world where 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 the National Assembly fight with the executive. It is the job of the opposition in the National Assembly, that is the PDP and co, to oppose any legislation. It is not the job of the APC senators to fight the president. When that happens in any country, that party is voted out. There must be a relationship between the national, because they are, they are from the same party. In the whole national party of Nigeria, they, ha they have a caucus where, where the member of the National Assembly and the ministers meet before every bill comes to National Assembly, so that whenever it gets there, it, it goes seamlessly without any friction whatsoever. So it is a good progress and development that there is no friction between her National Assembly and the presidency. That doesn't make them a rubber stamp. And when you go back into our history, the, the guys, <laughs> yes, the guys that built the Western Nigeria under Shiba Femi, uh, under Shiba Femi, well, the Professor Alukos and Co, they're all in their 20s. They are young men, 25, 26, 27. So it is still very wrong to think a 25 years old man have not come of age in the present day Nigeria. At what point uh, do you think a man should come of age? 30, 35? The minimum qualification age to become a member of parliament in the UK is 18. As a, as a member of the parliament, you can become a secretary of state at 18. That is the minimum. Yeah. So, I mean, so that is just a fact. Let's get some certain things wrong. All right. Um, All right. In, terms, in, in terms of the appointment of the president, I think uh, uh, we are trying to analyze a journey of about 48 months in five months. I don't think it's fair. I think it has more, more than enough appointment, over 5,000 appointments to make. I think it can still balance in terms of a, a federal character. So those who think it's at the, at the moment tilted towards Southwest, probably maybe. But I think you still have more than enough appointment to make that we go around. And I think we should focus more on the on the on the on the uh, uh, deliverables rather than you know disappointment. This is elitist mentality. Let us think about the people who wouldn't have the opportunity of uh, getting those appointments. That is more important rather than discussing about five thousand or so thank among. Th uh, thank you, Adela. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Uh, uh, so, yeah. so quickly, can I say something quickly? Yeah, please? go ahead, please. Yes, um, I, I think we need to get some things clear here. We're not talking about coming of age. I raised, and Osaso rightly also, you know, helped me to expand I read out the resume of this new chairman. I said, the man finished university, first class, awesome, did master's, awesome, and just did his NYC. The first experience, 
first experience we are talking about is government appointment, special advisor to a minister. And even before he settled down in that office, he's elevated now to the position of a chairman. So that is not the same thing for every young man. So I am right to say that it is because of his relationship. That said, also I pointed out the fact that experience is key. And I gave you the Chinese exa example. And that's why you see them excel because experience in these areas is very key. Go get the experience and then you are elevated with the experience you have gathered. So now telling me that the, the essence of FEMA is just to patch roads, even to patch the roads. And that is why our roads are what they are, because we believe we ridicule the office to the level of, oh, they are just to patch roads. So you don't even need experience there. So these are not the issues. And then we are considering the appointments that have been made so far. We are not discussing that the one that will be, be made. We are not discussing Nigeria as it will be, is it as it is presently. So that's what we are discussing. So we should get all of these things in perspective. And thank God, you know, my friends uh, also agree that so far they are lopsided. So Kyle and I are not just looking at them because we hate government. We're looking at these things as it is now. If the president right. changes tomorrow, Sean will come back and say things have changed. But as well, it is today, this is what it is. Well, the bros, what I would even have to say is that um, it is important at the initial commencement of your administration to demonstrate that you are going to be fair. You are going to, uh, if you're going to make appointments that are lopsided at the first four months, you've, you've already uh, sort of sold into the minds of people. So even if you end up balancing it in one year, there are people who just judge you based on your first actions in the first four months. Exactly. The first, the first um, few months of taking over in government is quite important. You want to tell people who did not vote for you that, look, I'm going to be fair to everybody. You want to demonstrate that um, you are for every part of the country. So there's no point waiting till you, you know, till you settle down and then you now demonstrate that you, you're going to be fair to everyone. You know, so on that, I, I do agree that the president needs to now, today, from today, sort of put a stop to the uh, perceived and real lopsidedness. That is quite, it's quite obvious there. You can't, you can't deny it. You, you would have to be, uh, you would have to be blind, so to say, to say it's not... You have to hate the there. president. You know? To not to, to tell him the truth. Yeah, it's clear. It's, it's yeah. very clear. And, and one of the things that is quite clear is that there are a lot of rumblings, even within those who support the president, but quite a number of people don't want to speak out, you know? And you have a lot of people saying, you know what, we're going to wait in, in the next four years, you know? So I, I don't think it's a matter of, I think what needs to be done can be done correctly uh, within the first four months of, of you co coming into government. All right, quickly, let me get one or two more persons. Uh, I can see some hands up. Uh, I see Mr. C. Henry. My name is some um, five on Twitter. Um, let me hear the four to you. You have uh, the say right now. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. What I want to ask the last speaker is this. Sorry, second to the last speaker is this. He said there is more appointment to be made. To me, as far as I'm concerned, the only appointment I think that is that is important to this country is INEC chairman. We already got a <laughs> all the service We already gotten the the civilian government. We have gotten the the inspector general of police. We have gotten the economic team that all Eurobas, the custom and everything that all Eurobas, people comparing this appointment, the Buari appointment are very, very wrong because Buari was representing three different, three uh, geopolitical zones, not central, not east, and not west. So, Tunumbu, as far as I'm concerned, this guy have disappointed Nigeria as a whole. And this is not the way to, to rule Nigeria. That's what I want to say. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Let me bring another person, uh, Masi, Masi Nzako, uh, at Ike Picano, right, on Twitter. 
Shang, good afternoon from here. Uh, good afternoon, Nigerians. Good afternoon. I want to appreciate Kayo Day, even though he blocked me. I want to appreciate him today. <laughs> Let me beg, let me today, beg him to unblock you right now. Kaede, can you unblock Mazi? Yes, I will. What Kaede and the liberals did today, they did justice. They spoke their minds, and that is how we can forge ahead as a country. When something is wrong, you come out and say it. It doesn't matter if it's your brother or it's your sister or it's your uncle. So what both of them did today was absolute justice. If they are in the Supreme Court, we will never have problem with this mindset. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, let's come to the issue. See, the problem is that the citizens of Nigeria are excluded from governance. Mm. We can talk as much as we want. We can rant and jump up and down. When these people decide what to do, they go ahead and do it. They know you have, you cannot do anything. You cannot even move a finger. So if, if after these appointments that we know they are not qualified, they don't meet the criteria, and they go to the Senate, where you have people who have to, a senior president will have to go to the, the Asoro to confirm if this person can be appointed, uh, cleared or not. So w when you have that scenario, you already know that these people will pass. I'm just saying to Nigerians, brace up for what is to come. More is to come. This is just the beginning. Wait after the sp Supreme Court passes their judgment. You will see fire. This is just the beginning. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mazin, it seems you have uh, uh, some prophecies that uh, we, uh, that we, some of us are not privy to. And I'm worried right now. So let's get Prince at uh, P. Ofubu on Twitter. You have the floor right now. Thank you, Mr. Sheung. I will say, when the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? Mm. I want to use the example to portray this, my point, so the, the listeners will get the picture of what I'm trying to say. Let's say, for example, the, the uh, Senate president is a gay, the IG of police is a gay, the governors are all gay. The president are gay. Now, someone who believes that gay is wrong. Now, probably, let me say the chief, uh, the chief judge is a gay or the whatever, they are all gays. Now, let's say someone who, who believes that is a pastor, that gay is wrong and is against his own faith. Why are you using that example? Now, Why can't you use some, some other example? It's criminal to be I'm gay also, I'm, in okay. Nigeria. Yes, yes, but so, I'm trying to go somewhere. Okay. Then if Please I'm quickly now, get there, uh, because the assumption... Yes. <laughs> yes, a pastor now goes to court, or one to do that, I want them to remove this person that is a commissioner that are perceived that it ought not to be this. Do you think that person will have a say? What I'm trying to make quickly is that when you have 99% people in power who possibly have same mind and same goal, it is easy to govern the nation, either for destruction or for resurrection. So that is how it is. So all I would just say to conclude now is that for whosoever that is enjoying this administration and you perceive everything is right, there is nothing to worry about. There is time for everything. Buhari spent eight years. He has done all he could. His time has come and it has gone. So whatever good or evil you rejoice and you eat from today, somebody else will come and will eat from you that same way. Mm. My Southwest brothers, all what is going on now that is very good. My Northern brothers also who were enjoying are also seeing it. Tomorrow, they might take over from you, or someone will do more than what you are saying. And when you two will be speaking English, defending, then they'll be wondering, what were you saying as of that time? So whatever thing we want this country to be for us, God will help us. Satan will wash us and probably assist us. We can say everything we want to say. The heart knows it all. And I will end with this. The greatest poverty I have seen on earth is politically 
political poverty. Once you are politically poor, you lack everything in life because once you are poor politically, you will do all it takes to make sure you bring food for your table. Your morality is gone. So let Nigeria enjoy whatever they want to enjoy. You speak to me from now to tomorrow, you are wasting your time. What will be, will be. Ofubu, uh, can I say Pastor P. Ofubu? You started with the Bible verse, you put prophecy in between, and you are ending with uh, an admonition. Thank you so much, Ofubu. <laughs> Let me bring in Dos Santos at Maxon Dos Santos on Twitter. Please go ahead. All right. Yeah, greetings, Nigeria. Um, for me, it is the prerogative of the president to make appointments, but I want to talk about the National Assembly that uh, Adela Wan raised. You know, he, he was talking about rubber stamp. Now, he said the duty of the opposition is to oppose the government. It is not the duty. Remember, Femi Bajabi Amila, because I like calling out the hypocrisy of people supporting APC. Remember, Femi Bajabi Amila said that uh, Tambua was made speaker by House members, not PDP. That's what he said. What does that say to you? National Assembly are independent. They are another arm of government. Baron de Montesquieu, a, a, a French philosopher, he came up with that principle, checks and balances. If you are feeling that the ruling party in National Assembly should be uh, supporting the government every time, even when they are going wrong, then I'm sorry, there's no democracy. That means you are talking as if we are in a military uh, dictatorship. We saw Dino Milai when he was in APC, opposing the government, bringing out corruption issues because their duty is oversight, checks and balances. That is their duty. So I'm surprised when people are coming up here and say, oh, National Assembly, uh, those in APC are supposed to be supporting the government. It's a big fat lie. In National Assembly, uh, what was it called? In the United States of America, when Trump was misbehaving, I, were you not seeing Republicans? against him even his vice president the vice president was against him for the capital in whatever that happened so what are you saying now to talk about the appointments tinubu government four months two weeks tinubu have been in government four months two weeks now nigerians the quickness with which tinubu appoints people in position shows that buari has failed because Tinubu did not succeed an opposition government, did not succeed PDP government. The quickness, just four months and two weeks. Isn't that laughable? The same people hailing Tinubu today, where this, in fact, the same people that we are hailing Buhari today, eh, when Buhari was banning a rice, banning a lot of things, you know, there are same people praising Cardozo. CBN governor, <laughs> Jesus Christ of Nazareth. <laughs> <laughs> now, for the uh, new boy that is appointed 25 years old, I don't have issue with his position. I don't have issue with his age. Yes, simply if he's 20, no problem. Now, the hypocrisy of the APC again. You want the likes of Mugalu, Feladu Rotoye, Showore, to start contesting as a local government chairman, state governors, or better still, States as assembly members, just because they do not have the experience to be the president of Nigeria. Can't you see the hypocrisy? Can't you see? Because to you, you felt like you, you need experience to be the president. You need to start as a, just like Wiki, local government chairman, uh, minister, chief of staff, governor, you know, then before you can before you can buy for the position of presidency. So what applies to this case of FEMA? Tell me. All right. This is so, hypocrisy. Yeah. Let me round up. Let yeah. me round up, sir. Uh, Mr. Sheung, I don't know the difference between the minister of okay, Nigerians. We have minister of information. Bayo Nonuga is the essay, information and strategy. We have Linda Akibe, SSA, strategic communication. I beg no be the same thing. In this government, you have <laughs> over, over, over 40 ministers, but South East have five. You have 47 ministers. I stand to be corrected. 47 ministers, but South East, out of 47, South East have five, and they are six geopolitical zone. Now, when the South East starts agitating, you people will say, oh, 
uh, Nigerians are preferred to them. That is stupidity. Thank you. Well, Dr. Santos, thank you so much. Let me let me get uh, um, Dr. R.P. Gale at uh, Dr. R.P. Gale on Twitter. Please, you have the floor right now. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Ogasion, for allowing me to speak once again. Uh, quickly, I just want to talk about the FEMA uh, appointment. I honestly want to go with uh, Laborious and so many other people that are supporting what Laborious said. You see, the appointment, I'm a young person as well, so I'm not saying young people shouldn't be appointed into uh, these positions. But what we are saying, using the academics for or the academia, for example, if an assistant lecturer has a master's and a PhD, but for the fact that he's still an assistant lecturer, you can't just make him the dean of the faculty. There exactly. are things that you have to have experience, right? And that's why you have CV. When they say CV, they want to see what are your qualifications? What apart from your qualification, what are your experience? I don't have problem with the young man, but do you actually want to tell me in all conscious in all seriousness that in that same FEMA there were not qualified engineers that they've been in that FEMA for all this while that cannot occupy the empty or the vacant position? That's what we are talking about. Nobody is against the young man. Nobody is saying the young man cannot man the, the, the agency. But are you actually saying there when there are no qualified people or the qualified people are not from the side of the presidency? That's why they are being sidelined. And then imagine you bringing a young man that just finished his master's to head this board. And then you have, uh, should I say, qualified engineers in that same agency, and you expect them to be answering him and yes, sir. There are things that we just have to tell ourselves the truth. We understand that, okay, this is APC, the president has the prerogative to appoint whoever he wants to appoint. But imagine bringing a new journalist, and you said the new journalist should now become the, the, the CEO of, uh, of, of, of Chinese television. Mm -hmm. And Sheung that has been there doing politics today, you expect Sheung to be answering that young man Yes, sir, with all the experience that Sharon has. There are things that we just have to tell ourselves the truth. It may favor you today, but remember tomorrow is coming. It might not favor you. And when you are coming to talk tomorrow, people will remind you of this same thing, this same nepotism you are talking about. And that's what we are saying. Nobody is against the boy. Nobody is against, I'm not even against the guy. But to be honest with you, I'm honestly not happy that a 25 year old, uh, newly graduated student from Brighton, I don't want to bring about ranking of universities in the UK, but the university I finished from is one of the top universities in the UK. And then check the ranking of the same University of Brighton in the UK, not even in the world. Some people in Nigeria, when they say finish from UK, they feel as if it's a big university. Check the ranking of the university in the UK, talk more of in the world. And it's coming to man FEMA, Federal uh, Road Agency, Maintenance Agency. Nobody is saying, the guy can be in the board, he can be a deputy, uh, uh, board chairman, no problem. What can you say? The guy that just finished masters and just did PA to minister of uh, works, he should come and man that place. There are there are qualified engineers in that same agency. If truly you are looking for someone that can do the job uh, uh, diligently, then you appoint somebody that is qualified in that same agency, and then the guy can deputize. That's what I have to say, Sharon. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And about uh, Onanuga, is it Onanuga or something? To be honest, I'm not an Igbo person, but then I'm a Nigerian. With the kind of tweets that that man tweeted before the election and even after elections, he's not supposed to represent the presidency because the presidency is not about APC. The presidency is not about the West. The presidency is about Nigeria. Onanoga is now going to be representing both the Igbos, both the Hausas, both the Yorubas, both the Igon, which is my language from Nasara State. And then you have somebody like that, that, no, 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 to be honest, no, there are things that we don't just have to discuss about it, to be honest with you. Mm. To be honest, I'm not happy with some of those appointments. Then talk about the EFCC guy. You have people in EFCC that finished from EFCC Academy. You have retired police officers. 
and then you now brought somebody that was just a secretary and a PA, like Leborio said, to a former EFCC chairman that was indicted. So if you indict the chairman, then you should know that the vice chairman too knows something about it. You're bringing the same person from the same carcass and you're saying you should come and man this place. And then other qualified people. So basically what the system is saying is just know somebody. Even if you're not qualified, just know somebody. You get to wherever you're going. Yeah. So I mean, you uh, can know yeah. one bridge for you. you have yeah. to follow the process. Thank one bridge you. for you, please. Uh, um, Thank you so, so much. So, let me, so, let me, so, so just so, a moment. So, let, let me say this so that you can, you can, uh, we need to wrap up now. I already yeah. had a dial on one of the platforms uh, and I'm looking at the the current um, uh, code of conduct, which is ca the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria. I'm trying to find it specifically uh, that portion where I already had a dial was making reference to. Uh, he's saying, the appointment of the 25-year road is a violation of the current co code of conduct. It says, before an engineer can practice, he needs four years of practice with proper supervision under a qualified engineer, talk less of making him head of a major government agency. I'm trying to find that, mm -hmm. that out in that sure. uh, code of conduct of uh, for the engineers. Uh, if that is the case, uh, it will be an embarrassment, just like uh, um, if anybody takes uh, the federal government to court over Oluko uh, appointment. So, Kaudi, let me allow you, please. Yeah. So, I, I just so I, you know, one of the problems we have in the country is, um, I'll say it in my, okay, I won't say it in Yoruba. You know, uh, it's like when you have headache and you start um, using. Uh, you have a wound, a sore, and you will start using Panadol to treat the sore. So, and I think this is where we need to be careful. So, and I also need for us to be quite careful about misinformation. Uh, first, a graduate, the ranking of your university does not uh, achieve uh, Ganefa and made the third class from the university. He it is, is a, it was a great practitioner in, in his profession. Uh, this young man, I don't know him, I've never met him. He did not finish from Brighton, he finished from the University of Success uh, University. Um, we need to make sure that when we are opposing government or when we are- No, they said Brighton or what is it, his resume is Brighton. Okay, I saw, I'm seeing University of Success here. Yeah, he studied engineering well, business- Brighton. Man. Yeah, it's it, it, uh, master's in success. In success, yeah. right in first degree. First so, degree. so That's what? I what I, but, but it would not even matter if you, if any. It's just like saying, uh, I graduated from University of Jos. Uh, it's like saying somebody that graduated from uh, uh, Plateau State University is less of a graduate than I am. I think it, it does not matter. So, first, the the responsibility of the board. You know, he's not carrying out uh, engineering activities. I strongly. He does. Uh, he does. Uh, he does. He does. So he does. what he says, what he says here is that the the board is responsible for the formulation of policies and charting a direction to ensure the effective discharge of their statutory mandate of the agency. You I know? want the statutory mandate of the agency. Of the agency, you know. So it's 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 about like it's not the chief engineer that is going to be on the road to start saying. This is what needs to be done right or wrong, you know. It, it would it would be an overseer. It, it's, it's, I, I just think this 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 comment about age, about it's not this comment about age. I think it's it's not. Um, it's not. I believe if young people across the globe mm. have been given responsibilities straight out of university, straight out of college, and some dropping out of college, and they've performed and demonstrated reasonably well. I don't see any reason why right. any young man within uh, the country shouldn't yeah. be given that um, that opportunity to, mm. to you know, to deliver. Mm. I'm, I'm yeah, already feeling yeah, like, uh, I'm already uh, feeling sorry, like uh, Methuselah right now. Uh, I was actually giving, uh, 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 just a moment, Liberals, I was actually giving uh, early, as a, as, a, as a young broadcaster, uh, someone believed in me, Tajuddin Karim, who was my uh, boss at the time gave me an opportunity in Quara Television. I mean, I'd worked in newsrooms that as a young man who was uh, barely 20 years old, um, mm. I started, my first job was at 
I was not 20, I was 19 plus. And, and that's why when I tell people that I've practiced for over 20 years, sure. they'll be wondering how old, uh, I mean, how old am I really? I sound yeah. like my two seller right now. Sure. But I believe so much in young that people. Experience. But, but yeah, but I do think that what experience will achieve for you, uh, knowledge sometimes may not get you there. Uh, knowledge, fantastic. Sure. Wisdom, yes. Sure. But experience is also very key. Liberos, please go ahead. So let me tell you, as a young lawyer, or as a, a practicing lawyer, I had a colleague of mine who did his, uh, you know, when you're in the ministry, the tendency for you to acquire degrees upon degrees. And mm. so he had PhD in law, but he was working in the Ministry of Lands. And so when he retired, he felt there was need for him to practice law. I didn't have a PhD in law, but he was under me because I have been practicing law. So he follows me to court to see the way it is done. And then he asks me questions. Why are you filing this paper and not this one? Why do you say this and not that one? Mm. And today, today he's, you know, very knowledgeable in litigation, sometimes even better than me. Experience here. So also, look at sorry, the sorry, liberals. I also will add that if you appoint judges to the court today, do, I like everybody to know that judges also serve internship before. Yes. Yeah. Judges yes. will. When judges, you are appointed as a judge, judge you even have, if you have been practicing law for, for several years, years, or you have, and you become a senior advocate, the moment you are appointed as a judge, you will serve in the internship, internship with, under another judge. Under another judge. So you that you can learn, judge, you can sit so in, you learn. learn how to... We're talking, about, yeah. we're talking about somebody just, you graduated, you did your master's, and then you did NYC to sign one year compulsory service. It is what... I think the point here where we're missing is the fact that, oh yes, you have people who had ideas, bright ideas, started their company, became CEO at age of 18. Fantastic. It is different. Here, you did NYC, and after NYC, election came. After election, you were made special advisor to a minister. And before you even settled into that office, you are made chairman of a federal board that whose responsibility, as we speak now, is so important because of the quagmire that our roads have become. Even if it is to patch the road, there should be, we're talking about policy framework for road maintenance in Nigeria. I think such a person needs experience in road management, road uh, uh, framework, and understudying. This understudying, you can't take away the place of experience in managing such a humongous organization. Not that we want Nigeria to succeed. That's why we want people who not just, oh, go there because your father is this, but yes, you bright young boy, he made first class, he's academically sound, but so that the government does not set him up to fail. Because it's like the government is setting you up to fail. Go and manage that agency and you know that these shoes are too big for you. When people talk about the First Republic, the Awola Wars, the uh, Jacondes, the uh, uh, Aluko, go and check their resume. Alaji Lati Jaconde was, uh, uh, Awola was his mentor and he cut his teeth even as a young boy, politically, under his mentor. Today, we no longer have mentorship program. Nobody wants to be mentored. Nobody wants to go through a mentorship program. You just feel, oh, look, the, uh, he's graduated. Yes, now young people are doing them uh, 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 brilliantly well outside. And so there's no need to mentor him. Boom, go and put him there. Even in the UK, where young people can aspire to the parliament, the political parties have what they call mentorship programs. And where they begin to, you know, from a young age, from two, I don't be surprised that these people are already taking on, on excursion, on tour, on leadership mentoring. But here there is no mentorship. There's a disconnect. 
That why do you think if you read law abroad, you need to come do two years in law school here? Yeah. Because there's need for you to even understand the environment you are coming to work in. You did you've done brilliantly well academically, but you also need to understand the environment you are coming to work in. And I think that is what the understanding world. is lacking. David, let me ask yourself and show a, a very quick question. So I've got here um, the, the past chairman of the board of PEMA. I've got uh, engineer Ezekiel Adeniji, who, who years of experience, many years of experience. I've got engineer Abdul Kadri Kure, is almost 70 year old. Uh, very, very many years of experience. I've got Chief Emmanuel Nwayamu. We all know Chief Emmanuel Nwayamu. Uh, an engineer to very many years of experience. I've got engineer guy uh, Otobo, very many years of experience, elderly, going into his, uh, his uh, 70. Mm -hmm. The youngest of them all is about 65. Would you? Don't, don't even go far. Don't go far. Let me tell you. If we are those people, do you know why they all failed? Yes. You know so would you? Failed? No, no. The, my Shall question we? is, would you, would you uh, count this very many years of experience, elderly, former chairman, would you say they had a successful uh, tenure in, uh, in FEMA? That is what I'm telling you. I'm telling you why they failed, despite their experience. You also need, that's what I'm saying, the environment you are coming to work in is very strategic and very key. So, but we are you, making an assumption. You know, wait. wait I am wait, telling wait. you practice. Yeah. I'm telling you in practice why they failed. Because you are talking about their failure. And now, we, despite their experience, they still fail because of the environment they are coming, they, they are working in. Now, in spite of that, you are not bringing somebody without experience at all. First and for the first hurdle would be those the, the budget for that agency. You even hardly see it. Mm. The budget for the agency, you hardly see. And so that's where you need to start from. Despite their experience, despite their relationship in government, to even pull out the funds for the agency to work with is a tall order and then now you have somebody who do not even have that experience intergovernmental relationship and how to navigate the murky waters of nigerian government and let me not use the word civil evil society evil evil civil evil service and then you now bring him he sits <laughs> down there someday he's being set up to fail yeah. and then someday yeah. money does not come everybody will be blaming him oh they made you chairman because of uh, so and so now perform now you are setting up the young man to fail you this is places you have brought people with experience they couldn't even perform because you 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 ensure that you squeeze that agency of its responsibility but and forms i just, to work. I just feel right. you are making Gentlemen. excuses for yeah. this for this um, um <laughs> men, men with many years of let's agree to disagree <laughs> let's agree, <laughs> to, agree, to, agree, to, agree to disagree thank you so much this. gentlemen <laughs> Well, well, what what an evening it's been for us to co have a conversation around the major issues in our country today. Certificate or no certificate, error in certificate, and other issues. There are those who say, let's focus on governance. Now, part of the issue of governance is legality, capacity of those who can perform. Yeah, I mean, those who are even put there, are they rightly put in those positions? Because at the end of the day, the life of our average Nigeria is important. Well, I think I wouldn't be wrong to say there is always a widespread suspicion against the actions and decisions of Nigerian presidents in recent times, some bordering on nepotistic tendencies. The debate about appointments lacking the required spread to foster national cohesion came up a lot during the former president, Muhammadu Buhari's government. Is the current administration towing the same path one of the concerns raised in the appointment made so far in this administration is the issue of legality. If a larger of a number of Nigerians continue to feel that there is a blatant flouting of the law and due processes, these are bad optics. The government will only be creating more room for mistrust and divisiveness. There are also submissions here tonight that the president should strive towards building an organic love by doing the right thing that way he won't have to worry too much about having a long list of image makers the highest office in the land must get it right for nigeria to succeed and that's how tonight's show 
has been. Thank you so much to the speakers and those who have joined in. Kaori uh, Ogunamisi, thank you so much for joining in from London. And Liberal Soshoma, thank you so much also for weighing in from Lagos City. Thank you so much indeed, everyone, for being part of it. And that's our podcast today. It's good to hear so many of you. Oman Ainja, Dos Santos. In fact, the vintage Osasu Obayuana. Thank you so much, everyone. It's been an amazing evening. And I want you to have the blessed part of your evening as a cuter. Thank you so much indeed. I'm Sean Kimale. Have a wonderful one. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Mike on Podcast with Shayono Kimbaloy. Mike on Podcast for the independent.